Because I've never experienced anything like it before, I, I don't know what to expect. Vellum means, is Latin for curtain. The movement in vellum, the flow of the pieces, that really does come from this, this idea of, of gesture, which, you know, goes back to abstract expressionism. Um, you know, things like Pollock and, you know, like dribbling paint and so forth. The, the kind of idea of combining that with um, something like pop art, which is very static, kind of like, kind of a cartoony vibe, and then kind of marrying those two kind of visual languages together. I've always been interested in 20th century art and it's important to, to me to link my art back to, to a context. My previous project, you know, I looked at futurism and this, this it was just like the next kind of thing I wanted to explore. It was originally more of a, a brush stroke, but as, as I kind of like give it the pop art treatment and I give it the kind of like uh, the, the, the bold outline, it made it kind of pop and sort of like float in space. If you look at the outputs, you can see things like little references to Lichtenstein, the little dots. And I guess the main challenge with this one, because there's so many kind of complex kind of like layers, lots of, lots of elements, composition is like a big deal for me. I used to be a painter and a sculptor. I want to make art that really does look considered and composed, although it's, you know, a product of an algorithm, but, you know, there's a lot you can do within an algorithm to kind of give it that structure and that kind of presence. And then with randomness, you have this amazing power that you can then iterate over that first idea and explore it, you know, in a, in a way that is very difficult if you're just using a paintbrush. So you can test ideas very quickly. In many ways, this is so different, right? The in real life minting experience for me really resonated, this idea that a collector is, is present in, you know, together with, you know, the artist and the community. And I always felt like they're part of the co-creation of the piece, you know, it's like almost the energy of the collector plus the algorithm produces the output. Well, let me, let me show you one second. If you want to follow me, just let's, let's peek this way. I don't know if you can hear it, but there's kind of like a party going on. There's a party over here. There's a tent hanging from the ceiling. There's prints on the wall. There's a big screen. And so what you'll notice is that it's kind of crazy. But if you're minting, if you're minting a piece of work, you kind of want a moment to reflect and really appreciate it. If you go into that tent, or it's very calm and serene. You know, it's very different from what's going on outside the tent. And you're sort of guided through a little sort of meditational kind of moment where you have an intent and you express the intent and then you meditate on it and then the mint happens. It's really quite great. It feels like you're in a different space and that lets your mind calm down. That lets you really appreciate the moment of the mint when you're receiving your work and revealing it for the first time. You hear these nice sounds, you see these nice lighting and then all of a sudden you step out and you see your work on the screen and massive, massive screen. It's like a portal. You're, you're standing inside of the portal with candlelight, music, and you just, you're, you're seeing it for the first time. I've personally noticed, you know, in the, in the course of making thousands, tens of thousands of outputs, you know, when, when I'm in a good state of mind, when my intention is good, I, I'm certain that the outputs come out better, right? And I can't explain why, it's kind of something I think is a little mystical, but. Generative art in person is really important to me. I see generative art as kind of a performance art a lot of the time, and so, being able to be there with people who are creating it or co-creating it as it's made and have those conversations is really fantastic. This was a more intimate experience. It was very, um, it felt very heartwarming almost. I think that Bright Moments, yeah, they've, they've really elevated the generative art experience, I would say. I don't see an example of this anywhere outside of Web3, you know? It's a very unique form. It's very rare in our history that you get kind of like new mediums. And whenever you do get a new medium, you get big expansions in the space of conceivable art, you know, what, what art can be. And you get a lot of excitement, a lot of energy, and also I think a return to like making truly like visual art. So generative art is this moment. It's been difficult to make art that doesn't look like something that could have been made 50 years prior, right? Now, we're, you know, there's so many generative artists who are making things we couldn't have imagined five years ago, or even two years ago, you know? I've been an artist for 25 years, um, a generative artist for about 10. You know, I was working under a rock for, for 25 years because there was no real home for, for the type of work I wanted to make. It's been surreal, you know, having worked so kind, I would say so intensely for, for so long. I've been 
very serious about making art, but with no audience. It feels very exciting because it's an, it's an opportunity for me to now, obviously, to, I work full time on this stuff, and now I get to meet lots of people, do things like this. I just feel really lucky, you know, because so many, so many artists don't make a living, you know. I, I just, it, you know, every day I think, wow, this, I'm just really lucky to have this. Moment. And I don't know how long it's going to last, right? I mean, I'm just. This is a significant movement in art history. You know, it's going to take a while for the wider art world to take it seriously for many different complex reasons. But 20 years from now, we're going to look back at this moment and it's going to be a key moment um, and a very exciting time to be an artist, you know. I'm just trying to kind of use the momentum I have and, you know, keep trying to make the best art I can. And having a sense that I'm making it for people, right? I want to be sensitive to their, what they like, listen to my audience, listen, get that feedback and, and yeah, just have a, have a sense that I'm, I'm in the entertainment industry and I'm providing the service for people and I want to do the best job I can. So that's what I try to remember. Yeah.